Welcome to Chinivision 2, where it's something different today. Look, there's retro content on the screen, but we're not talking about retro. We're talking about editing today, because you may not know this, but my day job is making videos. It has been for 20 plus years, and I've been Adobe Premiere user since, oh, 1999. I had a brief dalliance with Final Cut about 2008, uh, because that was better at the time until Apple ruined it, and I went back to... Premiere. So uh, essentially I've got 22, 23 years of experience with Adobe Premiere. Some days I can spend more time in Premiere than I do sleeping. Yesterday I spent 10, 11 hours, something like that, in Premiere doing a, a client edit. That's normal for people who do editing. So it's a tool of your trade in the same way that a plumber has a nice bag of tools in the back of his van. I have creative suite and yeah okay performance is, has never been great with adobe um the one thing i enjoyed about final cut was back in the day before apple ruined it was that it was far fast the old adobe people from the original premiere had gone to apple apparently and written final cut it was a really good bit of software and uh, i came back to premiere and yeah it's slow it's glitchy it crashes a bit but it it does the job resolve has been tempting over the years because I really like it and the performance is so much better but I'm I've been sticking with Premiere and the Adobe ecosystem and they've changed something in the latest version of Premiere um, but first of all I'm going to show you the old version this is version where do I get the 22.2 .2, uh, which was the one until about a month ago that was the main latest version such a shame they took away the horses from the logo I always feel anyway so this is the export window, which you could be staring at about 10 times a day. It's pretty good. Uh, it's been the same and it matches media encoder, which uh, you, you may use. And that's not a normal Chinivision timeline, by the way. That's just a very... I started working on Lotus 2, so all it's got is the footage laid out and that's it. But here we go. This is the uh, export window. You've got a big window over on the left, which can be resized. It's quite handy. It shows you your export range, which is really handy. Um, it's handy to check that before you export. Um, I, I'm exporting this before I'm doing the finished render, but bear with me. Um, so you've got all that. Oh uh, yeah, so you've got the source, you've got the output, you've got all these bits up here, and you can add things. You can add in LUTs there. That they basically allow you to lock in color to the video in very simple terms. Most of the time, you'll be stuck in this window here. You're, you might have a preset. You'll select your format up there. I'm selecting QuickTime, but we could select MPEG-4, for example. Um, oh, no, I want H.264. I'm an idiot. I could select H.264. There you go. And all my settings are on tabs here. Effects, video, audio. What I want, my bit rates are down there. I can scroll up and down. Easy. Everything's on one screen. There isn't much scrolling multiplex. You won't need to touch that. Captions, you might need to touch that. And you can publish it out to Facebook and FTP, Twitter, Vimeo, YouTube and stuff there, even to Adobe Creative Cloud. But the thing is, you never need to do that as a professional because as a professional, you know, <laughs> A, you're never going to publish directly to a platform because if you publish directly to a platform, you haven't checked the render. So if, if Premiere have stuck a glitch into the edit, then you've suddenly put that live onto YouTube or Vimeo or Facebook or stuff. You you want to save to your hard drive, check that footage, check that render before you upload it. But in actual fact, you will never even, you'll, you'll check that footage and you, what you will do is you send it to your clients because you won't have access as an editor to the platforms. Even with Chinivision, in fact, I... Don't, I don't even render. Uh, I, I, I render my Apple ProRes, then I use Handbrake to encode because the encoder is better in Handbrake. But either way, you're going to check your footage before you upload it. And stick with me because this is important. So actually, the Publish tab is really what I call a tab for parameter editors because no one in their right mind would ever use it because you're not going to be checking that stuff. You could, If there's a problem with that render... It, you're going to end up putting it live on the platform, basically. But everything else here is really useful. And you've got some good stuff down here, like maximum render quality, which you need for your final render. If you're being quick, 
uh, for rough cuts, you'll you'll have that tab off. And what that does, it gives you high quality scaling. So if you're scaling the footage down from say 4K to HD, then uh, you've got to, you make sure that is um, enabled. Uh, and your final renders, renders, uh, master renders, I always have that enabled. But rough cuts, I don't because it's quicker without it. But it's always there, like Marty Webb. It's always there at the bottom before you hit export. And these other things here as well, setting a time code start, really important things. Um, render alpha channel only. I don't really need that in Premiere, but someone might. That's more of an After Effects thing for me. You've got your metadata tab down there. So everything important is on one screen. And this is a great interface. Perhaps it looks a little bit dated, but it's really, really efficient. The only scrolling you really need to do is on these longer ones here. But you're getting into the really obscure stuff down here that you might be doing for broadcast, like your video limiter, loudness normalization. I don't need to worry about that. Some people might, but it's buried away down there, should you need it. Perhaps it should be on another tab. You've got plenty of space along there, um, or something like that, and, and various bits here. But all the common stuff, all the really important stuff, your video tab and your audio tab, it's all there, and it's good, and your bit rates are down there, and you can set those. And critically, it will remember if you're in your project and you come back to export another one, because I could be looking at the screen 10 times a day after you've exported and you come back to export another copy, it will have remembered everything in there without you having to have made a preset because you can be tuning as well um, these in rough cuts. You may need to send a rough cut to someone on a limited bandwidth connection somewhere and need to be really quick about it. Well, you might be tuning your you know, VBR one pass to be quick right down and so on. So you could be fiddling with these settings. And it worked. This this interface works. Now you're probably tuned out by now because I'm wittering. And it's been nine minutes or so so far. But Adobe have changed this interface. So now what I'm going to do is install Premiere, the latest version, and show you what is so horribly wrong and broken about the new Adobe interface. So here we are in the latest version of Premiere version 22.4.0 build 57 and superficially it all looks the same there's a few new features listed um, but uh, it's, it's the same old premiere until you go to the export screen everything's changed now superficially it may not look too bad we can do things like we did before. We can't go any smaller than that on the window there, which is rather annoying, as you can see. And it's very slow <laughs> moving around. It's not, remember how responsive that last one was, the old one, which has been the interface for years. So now we've got this down left-hand side. We've got all these export options that uh, for the different platforms. That may be useful for someone. I can't get rid of it as far as I'm aware, can I? No, I can't get rid of it. So it's taking up space. And as I say, I'm never, ever going to use any of these options down there. Somebody might, but I can't see why you would because of that problem where you're going to want to check it before you send it. No one in their right mind is going to send a file without checking it. If, if you do, if you ever do that, then you're a fool. Because I can tell you as an editor on Premiere for 20 plus years, there's going to be, when you least want it to happen, a flash frame, something wrong that Adobe hasn't told you has happened, uh, a plugin that hasn't worked. You need to check it with your own eyes before you send it anywhere. So that entire left hand side there is a waste of time. Now we've lost all our tabs down here, so I can no longer easily click across. So now we've got all these different tabs and drop down bits here. So up here we've got my file export. Now, I didn't show you this before, but if we go in here, there's my file there. What you used to be able to do was you used to be able to click on a file and overwrite it. You can't do that anymore. All you can do is select the directory you want to go into, and then you have to manually type the file name. That's <clears throat> sorry, coughing. That's really irritating because you may be in this interface eight, ten times a day, 
creating different iterations of files. You may click on Metro Cross there and then call it V1, V2, V3, V3. Um, and now you have to manually type stuff in there. Now, remember what I said about those vital export options, the maximum render quality and so on? They've gone. They're no longer on the screen. Uh, nothing here. Um, they should be next to the export button. They should be the last things you check before you hit export. They are vital. And now they're buried away. And we've lost our tabs. And they're now all in here. So you now have to go into the video tab and make sure that you have selected render at maximum uh, depth or, or render quality. Render quality is the important one. And in fact, it can be so that you go into video and that button there isn't activated. So it's completely buried away in there. And you're having to go down all in here to select what you want. Bitrate is buried right the way down here. Remember, it was just on the screen before and suddenly we're buried all the way down here. Audio's down here. And um, yeah, you're clicking on stuff there and all the other bits that are just... This is all more clicking and scrolling. And it may seem minor to people who don't use this software all the time. But it's, it's astonishingly inefficient. You can't even go in and press enter to render like you could before. Because you'd, you'd, before you'd have known that the thing saved all your settings from the last time you were in here. So you can just go back in here, press enter, and it exports another version. Can't do that. Got to go manually go down and click export. In any case, you wouldn't dare do that because it forgets the settings you had before unless you saved a preset. It seems to randomly just lose the settings. It's completely and utterly nuts. It's just insane. Um, essential bits of information hidden away. Um, you just, I, I cannot believe the inefficiency in this design. Adobe in their forums have come up with the most breathtakingly arrogant responses to um, hundreds of users, um, either on there or in other forums, who are saying this interface is rubbish. They said, we, we get it, change is hard, but we're not going back. And then someone called Patrick, who's more senior in the team, came on and basically said, um, no, it's not changing. Uh, you're all being abusive and horrible to us. Stop being abusive and horrible to us. We've tested this. It's been through all these user groups and uh, and what. And yet he's faced with page and page and page of professional editors who spend more time on this software every day than they spend sleeping, telling him it's awful and they can't cope with it because they're having to back up through this interface every day because you need to make small changes. That's the thing when you come into here, you're, you're having to sc scroll down and change the bit rate, change things, check that maximum render quality is enabled. You shouldn't have to do that. This is one of the most important screens in the software. And they've basically stuck two fingers up to professional editors in favor of these people who are apparently using this mess on the left hand side who are quite content to pump out crap to YouTube without even checking it. It's nuts. Adobe don't use their, know their user base. And the thing is they've locked us in to this subscription model where we pay them money every month and if we stop paying them, we lose the software. And in the old days, they'd put out an update on CD or download and we'd look at the update as editors and go, do we want that? Or are people reporting there's bugs? So we're going to wait for the updates for that. And you wouldn't hand over your four, five hundred quid for the upgrade until they had fixed the software. And now they're just taking money from your bank account on direct debit, sticking two fingers up at you and going, we're going to give you this bug rubbish. And and that's it. And I, you know, I, I talk about bugs. This isn't a bug. This is just a rubbish interface. The new version of Premiere is is full of bugs. Um, it's, it's, I've had uh, my waveforms on a three hour long uh, edit, um, dancing up and down like a disco with incorrect waveforms so I couldn't sync them and all sorts of things, random crashes um, that weren't happening before. They don't check this stuff or they, if they check this stuff, it's with kids 
who are putting together simple videos on camera phones, knocking them out directly to YouTube, and that's it. And not professional editors with three hour long timelines. You know, I, I, yeah, I've got a three hour long timeline at the moment. I've got six 4K streams, uh, you know, t uh, different tracks going down there. I've got six tracks of audio on there to be synced up. That That's the, you know, and I'm not even doing anything like a feature film or anything like that. I'm just, that's just kind of a regular day for me. That's what this software does. And, and to do that, it is abysmally bad at the moment. Uh, bugged, and I say crashing. And the performance, they Adobe are forever adding new features like this for no reason. Yet they never focus on the performance of their software. You can look at Resolve and see how fast it is compared to this stuff and go, wow. And Adobe will just be incredibly slow and just expect you to get a, a new, faster Mac. And, oh, look, we're that much faster on the M1 processor. Uh, they, they, Adobe actually put a graph out for the M1. And yes, they are faster on the M1 processor now because the M1 is faster. So look how much faster Premiere is in our graph. No, no. That's the opera, That's the computer, not your software. And Adobe never seemed to publish graphs for between versions of Premiere, saying we've improved render performance, we've improved this, we've improved that, because they never do. They focus on you know transcriptions, a new thing. They've done that. That's really good. But auto um, color grading, auto cell mixing, professional editors don't need that stuff. If you want to make a package for amateurs, and I'm going to sound very snobbish here, produce a separate package for amateurs. Wasn't it called Premier Elements? That people can buy for 100 quid, and it's great. They don't need all the power of Premier. We need the power of Premier, and we don't need it dumbed down. Get your act together, Adobe, because you're going to start losing customers. I think you are losing customers already to resolve um, and other packages. I'm starting to look very seriously at this stuff. There's a new French alternative to After Effects coming out soon. Um, or was it already out? Produced by a team of eight people in France. Um, although, frankly, I wonder if I could get by with Apple Motion, which I've got a license for, which performs <laughs> far better in terms of speed than After Effects. I just... I'm locked into the Adobe ecosystem. I'm a long time... You know, it's audition, but I, I go back to the days of Cool Edit as an editor. Um, and, you know, Cool Edit 1.5. Long story short, this video has gone on for way, way too long. New export interface is rubbish. Adobe, do not listen. They show breathtaking arrogance. And, and this needs to be sorted out because if this stuff isn't sorted out, then people like me are going to start walking away from Adobe and just leave the kind of, you know, the weekend editors and the evening editors to this stuff, and we'll just be going elsewhere.